Hi there friends, welcome back to another episode of Generation Tech. My name is Alan. With the release of Boba Fett's new show just weeks away, I thought it'd be a great idea to go through some of the best starships utilized by bounty hunters in the Star Wars galaxy. Best doesn't necessarily mean most popular, by the way. So unfortunately, fan favorites like the Razor Crest will not be featured in this video. Let's face it, Dinger is what happens when infantry gets behind the stick. It's not pretty, rocks are not meant to fly. Instead, we'll be taking a look at dominant bounty hunting ships that were able to take on law enforcement and criminal vessels with relative ease. Now, Cad Bane did have the Force on his side. He wasn't wearing indestructible Beskar armor, yet he was able to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with several Jedi and survive. In my opinion, he's one of the most skilled bounty hunters in the entire galaxy, even more capable than the geared heavy fess. Bane wasn't necessarily that attracted to material things, but during one especially dangerous mission, which included the theft of a holocron and kyber memory crystal from the Jedi Temple Vault, Caban requested that the client, Darth Sidious, pay him in the form of a Rogue Class Porax 38 Starfighter. This was the same Starfighter used by the fearsome IG-100 Magna Guard droids used by General Grievous during the Clone Wars. Bane's specially customized Rogue Class Starfighter, nicknamed the Xanadu Blood, even had a cloaking device on it, which is extremely helpful for the type of missions the Duros Bounty Hunter encounters. For you aviation nerds out there, the Porax 38 was inspired by the real-life Lockheed P-38 Lightning fighter bomber. Force users generally don't take on the bounty hunting profession unless they are really down on their luck. Asaz Ventress happened to be one of those force users who was desperate enough to try the profession, and she quickly became one of the top bounty hunters in the galaxy. Her preferred starship during her career as a hunter was the Lancer-class pursuit craft. This is actually a pretty popular model of starship for bounty hunters to use throughout galactic history. Asaj Ventress flew the Banshee during the Clone Wars, Ketsu Anyo, an acquaintance of Sabian Run, had her Shadowcaster during the Galactic Civil War, and Kid Malmash had his nebular Kelpie ship, which he used during the Battle of Exegol. The Lancer-class pursuit craft was also commonly used by the Black Suns. In my opinion, it's sort of like the crown vic of the Star Wars universe. It was relatively simple, reliable, and most importantly, it had cells for keeping prisoners in. It also had a turret-mounted triple blaster, two anti-personnel blaster cannons, and two heavy laser cannons. Asajj Ventress's version of the ship even had a cloaking device on board, which made it completely invisible to not only sensors, but also the naked eye. Our Thorians are weird, and the Moomoo brothers, Dob and Del, were definitely strange even for their kind. The Ithorian brothers were expelled from their herd at a relatively young age because they were a danger to themselves and everyone around them. They would seek work as bounty hunters during the turbulent Old Republic era in the midst of the Mandalorian Wars. Their ship, the Mumu Wilwa, was just as unorthodox as they were. Classified as an assault gunship, the Mumu Wilwa was a Palasia Duplex Command assault gunship, and it was ridiculously overarmed. It had entire batteries of laser cannons, missiles, and torpedoes of every make and model, and several different turret weapons as well. The real issue here is many of these weapons were redundant, and some of them intersected with other weapons' field of fire, or even blocked their field of fire. The Mumu Willwall also had two different cockpits. This was originally intended to divide the starboard and port side weapon systems between two crew members. The dual cockpit system was also used during docking maneuvers. But because Dob and Dell were essentially lunatic degenerates, they would oftentimes actually fight over control of the ship in the middle of a dogfight. Nice. Which is why it's not surprising that they had a low success rate for bounties. Witnesses, witnesses have actually reported seeing the Mumu Wilwa flying around in circles in space lanes for hours on end because the two brothers are fighting for dominance over the controls. It should be noted that no conventional military has ever bought a Palasia Duplex Command Assault gunship because it was considered a poor design, especially from a tactical perspective. But I think the sheer amount of weapons on board this ship qualifies it for our list, and in the right hands it could be really deadly, say if like a bunch of Mandalorians were running it. A droid as deadly as IG-88 deserves a ship that is equally as dangerous, like the IG-2000, a modified aggressor-class assault fighter. Being a droid gave IG-88 some huge advantages. For one, he doesn't really need life support, and also, he can withstand extreme G-forces that a normal organic would probably die from. And so IG-88 decided to use all of that extra room and tolerance for G-force to install a capital ship engine from a Nebulon B frigate into his 20-meter-long starfighter. 
This is why the IG-2000 is one of the fastest sublight vessels in the galaxy. It can even match Boba Fett's Slav 1 speed. But the IG-2000 also had its inertial compensator shut off, which meant that it could turn at a ridiculous speed. IG-88's procedure in stopping ships involved first using the ion cannons to disable the ship and then using a tractor beam to latch onto the ship, at which point he would send four assault drones to pacify anyone left on board. Montross was one of Jango Fett's comrades in the True Mandalorian sect back in the day when Yester Muriel was developing the Super Commando Codex. Montross was a capable fighter, but jealous of Jango Fett and Yester Muriel's connection to one another. He would ultimately abandon Yester Muriel on the battlefield, leading to his mentor's death. He would go into exile after this and become a bounty hunter, and would acquire a modified KRTB Doom Treader from Corellian Engineering Corporations. Like most CEC civilian freighters, Monterosa's ship, nicknamed the Hell's Anvil, was highly customized with a Class 1.3 hyperdrive. It also had a double-plated Durasteel hull and solar ionization cannons, which could bypass conventional deflector shields and melt away Durasteel with very little effort. The Zomberg bounty hunter Suki was a special individual amongst bounty hunters. She didn't always take jobs for financial gain. Sometimes she would find some good causes to attach herself to, like defending a bunch of farmers from pirates. She probably watched the film Seven Samurai when she was a kid or something. Now, Suki usually rolled deep with a crew of bounty hunters, and she would transport them aboard her SS-54 assault gunship known as the Halo. This was a modified gunship that had six different laser cannons mounted onto it that could provide covering fire when inserting to a location. While the SS-54 assault ship won't be much of a help during a dogfight, it was terrific for quick hit-and-run tactics that bounty hunters like Sugi oftentimes used. Now, the last time I did a video about the Slav A1, I didn't even know that Disney had changed its name to the Fire Spray, which is actually the name of the class of ship that the Slav A1 belongs to. Here's my take on this whole scenario. I, I understand how the Slav A1 or Slav 1 can be slightly offensive to Slavic people, but for the most part, I don't think this is a huge problem. And that's because this is a story that takes place in a different galaxy that is not associated at all with our own. Plus, the Slav A1 is an iconic ship and it deserves to retain its original name. Everything about this ship oozes character as well, from the gyro-stabilized cockpit, which rotates between landing and flying modes, along with the many different weapon systems concealed within its hull, just like a Mandalorian would conceal many weapons within their armor. Designed with a Class 1 hyperdrive, the Slave 1 could outmaneuver and outgun just about any ship in its class. And just like how Django and Boba Fett represented the top tier bounty hunters, the Slave 1 would represent the top tier bounty hunting ships. Which is why if I were Slavic, I would not be offended by the name Slav 1 or Slave 1, because it clearly is not designed to ridicule the Slavic people, it is designed to show us how cool they actually are. The Punishing One was the personal starship of Dengar. It's a weirdly shaped ship, and despite being large enough to contain a holding cell, there aren't any on board, and that's because Dengar liked taking back his bounties dead rather than alive. Built on a Jumpmaster 5000 transport platform, this crescent-shaped ship, like most CEC manufactured vessels, was heavily customizable. Dengar modified an R2 series astromech to operate a quad blaster cannon for point defense, and there's also a mini ion cannon and proton torpedo on board as well. As far as speed goes, Dengar used to brag that if the Millennium Falcon could do a Kessel run in 12 parsecs, then the Punishing One could do it in 10. I think he's being a little overly optimistic about this. He's probably wrong. The Minoc was a Helot-class medium space transport used by Kate Skywalker, the disappointing legendary descendant of Luke Skywalker. This transport ship was heavily modified with two medium laser cannons, two heavy laser cannons, and a quad laser cannon turret. It was large enough to also hold up to three starfighters within its hull, and was equipped with a class leading 0.5 hyperdrive. The ship was used by Kate and his crew for bounty hunting missions all across the galaxy. It was said that the ship could fly nearly as fast and was as agile as a starfighter, but had Corvette-class level defenses and firepower. Unfortunately, Cade Skywalker was oftentimes on death sticks and had force visions of his disappointed great-grandfather Luke Skywalker, which made piloting a ship a bit difficult. Bueller Valance was a skilled bounty hunter who worked during the reign of the Galactic Empire. His ship, the Broken Wing, was a cruiser and served as his work vehicle and also home. The ship was equipped with several laser cannons and could be piloted by a single individual. 
Valens had used the ship to take on several TIE fighters and even Darth Vader himself and survived. So as you can see, there are a variety of Starships designs out there that can lead you to success. Let me know in the comment section below which one you prefer and if I have also missed one of your favorite Bounty Hunter designs that you believe deserves to be on this list. Also, don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification button down below so you don't miss out on the rest of our awesome content. And as usual, thanks for joining us today. If you're watching this, you are Generation Tech.